Today we're going to talk about the genetics of black leg resistance in canola. So canola has two types of resistance and all Australian cultivars have these two types of resistance. We have major gene resistance and quantitative resistance. Now the way a major gene resistance works is it's a gene for gene interaction between the pathogen and the host or the canola plant. And what happens is there's a protein in the pathogen, in the black leg, that the gene in the canola plant recognises. So in the growing season, when a spore of the um, pathogen off the black leg lands on the leaf of a canola plant, the gene in the canola plant recognises that that spore has landed on it and it turns on a defence mechanism and it basically stops the disease. So those plants which have an effective major gene are totally immune for black leg. And black leg can't attack, it can't cause leaf lesions, it can't cause stem cankers, it can't cause upper canopy black leg infection. But one of the issues with these major genes is that the protein within the pathogen can actually change or mutate just slightly and then the plant no longer recognises it as being attacked and then that major gene is no longer effective and the plant becomes completely susceptible. So as growers you'll know what the major genes are in your cultivars by the um, blackleg rating groups on the blackleg management guide. So your cultivar may be an A, B, C, D, etc. And those letters signify which of those major genes are in each cultivar. And you'll see that some cultivars have a single gene and some cultivars have multiple genes. And that means that some of those cultivars with multiple letters, it means that they've got multiple genes. Um, so the seed companies know which genes are in all their cultivars. They can identify these major genes through molecular markers or through using differential isolates. And then they can strategically place different major genes in different cultivars or different combinations for whatever's required. It is important to know the major black leg gene resistance of your varieties to allow you to rotate from year to year. This helps to maintain the level of black leg resistance in each variety. As an example, if you're growing Benito, a black leg grouping of group A, then it's a great idea to rotate in the following year to Trophy, which has a black leg genetic grouping of A and D. business is not just focusing on yield and oil, we spend a huge amount of time focusing on blackleg and introducing new blackleg genetics into the marketplace to help growers, um, advisors and the overall market. We have been fortunate through the acquisitions of AgVic, New South Wales DPI and Ag Seeds that we have brought a huge base breeding program or genetic program into our breeding lines. We are still very active sourcing black leg genetics from around the world, from Canada, China, the EU, and also Japan. In having this diverse genetic offering, it enables us to react to the marketplace and the pressures that black leg does bring, obviously through mutation and being asexual. It embeds in our business that we're always striving to bring an improvement through for the marketplace. <laughs>